Hello and thank you for staying with us. This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them. My name is Elsie Godwin, and I've got my co-anchors with me, Ife Oluwa Shokeye and Nimi Dekombe. What's up, guys? Chill, man. You? I'm all right. Ah, oh, I'm mm. great. <laughs> okay. So, the Malians, you are a Malian. I mean, we know that. And you are also a Malian, right? Yeah, I'm not a Malian. Oh, you're not? Oh, yeah, Ewa. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> so, man stabbed at Naramali's concert in London. The wound is said to not be life threatening as Naramali proceeded to three his fans. No arrests were made and um, inquiries still continue. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I to the Malian. Like, yeah. I, I don't know what happened. Nobody knows what happened exactly. Mm. We don't know if it was connected to the concert or it was just something that it was a coincidence that it happened around where Naramali was having his concert. So until the police release more information on this one, I think um I just hope they said it's not fatal. The mm. stab wounds are not fatal. So I think the guy will be okay at the end of the day. Well it's sad though that um stuff like that this keeps happening especially like the whiskey concert as well um someone got shot and that one was fatal so this one let's just hope it doesn't keep happening like this mm. yeah. okay so after the police came around and intervened people were not allowed to go in anymore mm -hmm. so i don't know how many people were affected or how many people were paid and could not go in to see their president at least but then it's good for him at least it's his O2 arena but the show, the show was still and so it was so good fantastic. It was well nobody so said good. anything about selling out from everything that well, I read he so said it. he posted something on his ig page this said, morning he said sold out everything he wrote sold yeah, out. Yeah, yeah actually, okay. Facebook packed. That's what I said. That it's actually. a four thousand nine hundred and something capacity, so it's 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 it normally it's not can too fill small. Up that. Yeah, it's not too big. It's not like the main O2 arena that is about twenty thousand capacity. That's mm. where whiskey sold mm. out. That's where David. Sold no, I mean, out I'm not saying well. he cannot sell it out. I'm just going by the information I could see or I saw the time I well, checked. Well, he posted and something this I morning. I mean, the platforms nobody said anything about selling out. So now mm. that he is saying he so that I'm sure they will pick that up also to mm. add but if they cannot verify it then they might not want to add it to their publication if they really want to go you know so well congrats to him and I just hope that this whole violence thing can just calm down a bit because it's especially it's, in London know. with the whole stabbing yeah, thing. I think mm. it's actually a, a thing in uh, London this stabbing I don't think it really has anything to do with Naramali because things happen I think people were just excited and maybe mm. in the bit of the excitement we use that opportunity to maybe mm. we don't know you know we don't really know the details of what happened but I'll just say that this is not the first time that something um, terrible or bad is happening in somebody's concert. I don't think it's just limited to Naramali, mm -hmm. so it's too vague because for say to Naramali concert. Because people will try to say that uh, Naramali I have and, tried uh, already. Uh, 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 on his uh, record. Uh, 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 there is whiskey but, so yes. now. Whatever, I shall know yeah. that is a Malian character. It's That's no it. Malian. <laughs> it's a Malian okay. attitude. Accept it and own it with pride. I'm not a Malian. Ah, <laughs> you changed your mouth. Okay, let's move on to the next story. Sakoje says we made Afrobeat attractive for Africans. Um, I mean, I like this is not him talking about Ghanaians or Nigerians. Okay. He was representing Africa mm -hmm. as a whole. I mean, Z Sakode is one of the biggest rappers in Africa, whether mm -hmm. we like to agree or not, oh, but yes. he is. And he said something one I of liked. The most talented as yeah, well. he said something about how. Um, music were being played some years back so yeah. when you're at a party at the time and you want people to think okay let me just start going home you put in one of the um african songs and they leave but right now it's it's the other way around so when mm -hmm. people are vibing to afro bait afro pop and all that and you just play one foreign song it feels like okay i think party don't end we'll just <laughs> house, right? yeah. Yeah. so i mean before i didn't see i didn't see it from that angle until he mentioned it and mm -hmm. it dawned on me like really I don't that's go out a lot, is. but that's how it yeah, is right true. now. You're sitting down in the club, and then you hear one foreign song. You feel like, okay, it's like it's time to move yeah. to the next one, right? So yeah. mm -hmm. we've come a long way, regardless yeah. of how people feel and how some would say that Afrobeat is still a growing child. Agreed, but we've really come a long way. Yeah.
Yeah. I think people are more proud mm -hmm. of Afrobeats and the music. And I think the the current Afrobeat musician, musicians are really, really trying and putting out content out there that we can be proud of. Mm -hmm. Because I think that that's one of the like one of the reasons why Afrobeats has become more popular even amongst Africans. It's because we've seen um, we've seen an improvement when it comes to production. We've seen different. They are now diversifying, and it's not like mm -hmm. we are hearing. You know, I feel like there was a time when people were complaining that we're hearing and getting the same thing yeah. from you know from our musicians over and over again. I feel, I feel like, like they now, picked something. They learned from the Western yeah, world and they they added picked, our roots to it. And, yes. it's just and, and I feel like now they make a lot of beautiful music that we can be proud of and, and we can vibe to and mm -hmm. not feel like oh we need to get this from a foreign from foreign music i feel like we can all get that from african music so yeah yeah and i think a lot of um the angle i picked this from is that a lot of Ghanaian artists and all the artists from different parts of africa should take a cue from this um Sarkodia's attitude about yeah. the unity spirit you understand because some other people might want to personalize it and say mm -hmm. that oh ghana or oh, we made it you get like that's i believe that's what a shatawali would <laughs> for me, I'm just saying, like, Eshatawali will probably say something like that. But um, Sako there just showed that it was the African continent mm. he was talking about yeah. at large and how the Afrobeats has evolved, evolved, evolved. and garnered inter international recognition to the extent that we see a lot of foreign artists using our sound to make their own music. To the extent that we got a nomination on the Grammys. Yeah, yeah. so I think, I, think, it's I, think that's, I think it's a big deal. And like mm -hmm. you said, it didn't dawn on me too that really the mm -hmm. party don't end when hip hop yeah. song comes in. <laughs> you get it. Like mm -hmm. when you're in the club, being as much as I'm not the Niger Niger mm -hmm. music type, but if I'm in the club, that's what I want to listen to. I don't yeah. want to be listening to some foreign stuff. Yeah, yeah, it can come up every once in a while, but Sometimes I want more look. Kiki, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It could come up once in a while, but <laughs> really, I think it's the other way around now. And that's that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, stay tuned as tea time will be right back just after this break. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child at the scene every day. <laughs> <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Alibaba. Oh, <laughs> Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to do everybody feeling all right. Still buy. Sometimes I look myself minimal are you. Mm. Akpala music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi like woo. <laughs> Welcome back. This is still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Monique slams Oprah Winfrey for not standing up for justice. Claims she makes her life harder. Her open letter, or in her open letter, like she likes to call it, this time is about Oprah Winfrey involvement in a Russell Simmons documentary. While she allegedly defends Harvey Weinstein, she accused Oprah of disparity in the way she treats people who were accused of sexual misconduct, claiming that the media mogul was going to be a part of documentaries about MJ and Russell alleged sexual misconduct while she spoke up seemingly to defend Harvey. She ends her open letter by saying, please consider standing by the people who are right and not the right people. <clears throat> now that punchline is deep. Yeah. Stand by the people who are right and not the right people. True. We know what that means, right? The people who are right, yeah, not by the right mm -hmm. people. The right people. No, because yeah, you are people that you should act. Uh, exactly. You know, that's what we're going to tell people. I think, I think Monique said the right thing. I'm not even going to act like I don't have the same feelings about Oprah because okay. she's done a documentary about MJ. She did the documentary about MJ. She's uh, she, she, them a, she, she gave them a platform. Like yeah, yeah the, but yeah. she was yeah. part of it. Mm -hmm. She's um, doing the um, Russell, Russell Simmons. Simmons stuff. Even MJ, and, when people were saying yeah. this man is dead, he was acquitted. And you know that's the same thing. Was. She, she did not have a platform. Yeah, she still gave a platform. You know that's she the same respond. thing Russell said that. Why? And it's not just Russell. I think 50 Cent also said the same yeah, thing. I think Didi said the same 
same yes. thing that look why are you trying to bring a black man down like you're always going after your own kind mm. like i don't know if it's if it's um if she's been brainwashed and because not everybody that is black is actually black some people mm. actually have the white mentality oh my. yeah <laughs> that's the way i see it so yeah. i don't know if that's what is going on with oprah right now but i think that um justice for all hmm. if you if you say you want to use your platform to put out the truth out there or you are feeling some type of way for the victims of this uh um, yeah you know and, yeah, and so don't thing. be don't be do, um, doing the favoritism thing saying that okay because this person is i'll probably i probably will gain more from this person and i have nothing to gain like it doesn't make any sense so monique said the right thing yeah um, I another thing i just them. want to add or chip in there is that the thing the reason why Oprah might not really... Okay, the reason why they're accusing her of being anti-black, because a lot of people accuse her of being anti-black, that she's always um, trying to paint... Like, whenever a black man is accused of something evil, mm -hmm. she's always, like, giving people a platform mm -hmm. to talk about it and all that. But when it comes to maybe, like, white people that do the same thing, she never, ever says anything. Mm -hmm. And she has been questioned about Avi Winston in particular because they were friends. Mm -hmm. They were yeah, close friends. Yes, they were close friends in the industry. And her comments was that it should not be about having one step. Mm -hmm. But when it was Michael Jackson, because I followed be the Michael mm -hmm. Jackson documentary yeah. case closely. When it was Michael Jackson, she wrote on her Instagram, I will not forget, she wrote on her Instagram page, it's time for Michael Jackson to be down. Or be something wow. along that lines, like something like the end of his legacy, that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. So a lot of people were already feeling, getting that kind of vibe that why is it that it is only when black men are being accused of these things? That's when you find a voice to speak up. Mm. Avin Weinstein's um, victims are not only white people. They were also black. They would have been black victims too. So I don't understand why she's just focusing on the black men who have been accused of all the sexual misconduct and ignoring the more prevalent, more powerful white men. I think the understanding, the understanding the lies in the way she ended that um, mm -hmm. open letter, which yeah. is um, stand by the right, um, the person who is right and not the right people. How right put that again? So yes. I think that really sums it up. And I don't know what her, what she aims to achieve, but I mean, Oprah is. She's a strong force on her own. Yeah. And, you know, there are people that could be tied to certain people because they feel like they gave them the opportunity. Yeah, they saw true. them when nobody was seeing them. Mm -hmm. They saw them in the way they wanted to Bias. be seen, right? Yeah. And I understand that, but she should understand that she has grown. And everybody that comes into your life played a role, or they have a role to play. And even if they were not available to play that role, somebody else would have played that role. And it's about the talent that you are as Oprah Winfrey, not because they gave you. If you did have that platform, or sorry, if you did have the talent and they give you the platform, you probably yeah, not still become yeah, Oprah, you know? Become so I think she needs to come in to understand that she is a strong force and she doesn't really need to, okay, the word I want to use is not nice for TV, but she doesn't need to I suck up. <laughs> to, she doesn't need to suck up to anyone <laughs> just to see. I mean, she's already big. I think yeah. she also has a skeleton, skeleton in her cupboard. Which and she doesn't want them to off. dig out. If yes. not, then I think she should well, rethink. Yeah. And Tyler Perry was also dragged into this. Um, yes, because they had an issue. Um, Oprah, Monique, and Tyler Perry. This was a long time ago, mm -hmm. 2009, the Precious yeah. uh, movie, where she said that. But the thing is that she, Monique also said that they admitted to her mm -hmm. that they, that she was right in this situation. Mm -hmm. But no, she's, uh, she's always said she wanted a public apology. Yeah, a public apology. But the public apology is what they have not done. Yeah. Because, they black, because of the incident, she became mm -hmm. black. In the mm -hmm. industry, and then we, we all know how, like, what happened in Monique's mm -hmm. career and all of that. So, because of that, she has been asking for it, and pub, um, Oprah has not given her a public apology. And there was something else that Oprah did to her, apart from the Tyler Perry precious is, um, incident, and where, she yeah, when she also. brought her brother. Mm -hmm. So, because of that, also, she that also is wants why, an apology. you know, she still wants that apology. Okay, I mean, well, but I don't think this is about the apology, I think mm -hmm. she's yeah. just going off the back of what is actually going what on. What is right happening now currently with Russell Siemens and all of that. So mm -hmm. I think that's actually what's going on right now. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll keep watching and see how Oprah will react to this one. But moving on to Oprah's, I think this is one of her best friends, right? <laughs> Tyler Perry's A Fall from Grace was streamed by 26 million people in its first week. Tyler Perry took to his Instagram page to make the announcement as he got the statistics from Netflix. Says he has always wanted a worldwide premiere and Netflix made that absolutely possible. Mm. <sighs> I'm super happy for him. Mm. I mean, he, he mentioned his army. 
So you mm -hmm. should remember, in case you don't like his movie, he has his army <laughs> willing and waiting to watch. And um, kudos to him. It just goes to show that he's worked very hard on this. And um, even if he's dropping something else tomorrow, I still want to see it. Even if I'm not seeing it for entertainment, I'll see it for... <laughs> I, don't, I, don't get, I don't get why there were lots of criticism on um, a fall from Gary. Have you seen it? I would yeah, give you a million it. reasons. No, there's a million. No, no, there are no, a million no, reasons no, to I've criticize that movie. And I think it's a great movie. Wow. Mm. It is a great movie. It's something movie. that a Nollywood mm. producer can't do. It's, a, it's something that a yeah. Nollywood no, movie it's not producer It is. No, it's not. No? It's not. There were so if many plot holes in that movie. If I had gone with mouth say or hear say, I probably wouldn't watch that movie. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad that I had to just no, okay. sit back and watch mm. it and see for myself. And I, and when I when did, I say I was it's not like, a it's good a movie, good movie. It's, it's a good a movie. Very, very good But movie. when you watch it from the lens of a critical perspective, mo you know, then you, you begin realize to there are so many things that But the movie, wrong. it's a good movie. It's a good it's story. A good, I see people saying story. thank you for telling our story. It's a massive plot hole. You know, people, mm. people, People are shying away from talking about us, and we are, yeah. we are putting it just as it is, yes. without sugarcoating it. I know I also mentioned on this table Apart that it's a true, it's, it was inspired yeah, by a true life story as well, right? right? So it's okay, but it could have been better. Like basically. I said, like she said, if you look at it with critical lens, you see that the whole oh, okay, storyline. What were you guys expecting? Falls. We're not expecting. No, one, let, me, let me tell you one of okay. the issues I have. You said that you met a young man. And you fell in love, mm -hmm. and you got married without meeting mm -hmm. anybody from his family. Did she meet Come anybody on, from his family? It's the Western world. Oh. It's not. It's not Africa. Mm -hmm. She did not meet his it. friends. She never knew yeah, where he was yeah, staying. She it's, never. It's the Western, I felt like the, the way Western they, culture. the way they made the woman, it was like for somebody who okay, was a okay, banker, let me, let me, she was let me not let smart you understand the part that is mm -hmm. is can make you feel like they're playing with our mind, mm -hmm. right? So you you could place a man in the bank. Right, mm -hmm. withdrawing the money that is not his, and the bank still and the bank said still allowed him. They cannot do anything. You are working with what? I think a bank, right? Yeah, she's and the bank. bank was not ready to investigate and how so their the, money, the, how moved. the money disappeared. Know, Come on, there were so many, so many things. And then so he, quoted, many things. he quoted a law in the state, whatever yeah. state it is, that, 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 that allows that whatever it is, the woman has, the man has. I'm like, in which country? Really? There is a lot. So many plot I holes. know, but it's still a great movie. Okay. Another thing another person who pointed out was that a white woman mm -hmm. killed herself mm -hmm. in a black woman's home and nobody did any investigation. Come on, it is not possible. It's time for a short break, but we'll be right back after this very short one. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I they see them every day. <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like an Alibaba? Alibaba. Oh, <laughs> Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to do everybody feeling all right. Still buy. Sometimes I look myself minimal are you. Mm. Akpala music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi like woo. Sleeping early, sleeping early. This is still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Up next for conversation is Madonna, who faces class action lawsuit from fans over late starts to concert. She's been, um, she's been said, um, she's been sued for breach of contract, loss of value, false advertisements, and negligent misrepresentation. Andrew Panos and Antonio Valota claim the pop star kept them waiting up to three hours before taking the stage at Brooklyn Academy of Music Shows in New York last year, and the concert left them stranded in the city okay so I'm part I'm particularly excited about this lawsuit and mm -hmm. I just want to pray. We need to bring it down tonight. I just want to pray and beg that this country becomes three hours in Nigeria. Six hours. Do you remember when Steph London came to Nigeria? Yeah. The show was supposed to start for six p.m. Right? Do you know when she came on stage? Just guess. No, don't know. It's if you guess. I think it was twelve or three 
A. But M. I think I think it's part of the uh, African time thing. This is not African no. time. African time is the, the feel, event supposed to start like by six. It starts by eight. You know, That's Madonna African has her, her tour has been. This is the second lawsuit, right? Yeah. After the other one yeah. was two months ago, and mm -hmm. this, the same issue, right? They don't announce when there's going to be a delay. a delay. She comes on stage when she wants to, and I like that there are provisions in the law to tackle things like yeah. this. And I'm hoping that we get to that point, right? Mm. But I feel like there's a Nigerian on her team <laughs> that she needs to push through. <laughs> <laughs> Nigerian on her team because I don't get it. Uh, I really hope that in Nigeria we'll be able to implement something like this because the the fact is just that most of our artists, I don't know one art, Nigerian artist that is not guilty of coming to their concert late. In fact, it, is, it has become a normalized thing and mm. people don't. And the, the truth is just that like people pay. Early, it's like if you come early because of you, are even doing yourself. Mm. <laughs> but why would you put 6 p.m. on a ticket and then you start the show by 12 a.m.? You did not think about people's plans for transportation. You did not think about how they were going to well, leave I think after the concert. People are always also looking out for the main artists, but you are not just sitting there from 6 p.m. If you get there by 6 p.m., you see other people. Uh, no, no. some concerts that they don't. We are not going to get there by 6. I was telling you about. Uh, nobody, I was nobody, there. So, said so, you know, let me tell you, if uh, even uh, the DJ was not playing, they were still setting up the stage. Stand as, there. At, I, I left there 12 o'clock. Yes, I left there 12 o'clock, okay. and they were still setting up the stage. Mm -hmm. And this was a show that was supposed to start 6 p.m. I'm so talking about 12 p.m. So where is the artist that was warming up? Well, I'm just saying. Usually, you have artists that warm up. They still don't start six o'clock. Yeah, they, they still don't start six p.m. They start maybe I ten. Because they're eleven. I'm, that just, I'm not trying to defend them, but because I, I think it's it's total rubbish. If you're headlining yes. a show, you should be there on time. Mm -hmm. Even if you're not performing, let people just know that okay, Bonaboy is around already. Yeah. Whiskey is around already. David Dobo. But, but you guys say you let have a show, show for six p.m. Yeah. Yeah. respect your fans yeah. that have left their house. The only one who came and respected time was Cardi. Be. Yeah, true. I mean, before 12 yeah, o'clock, the show was done. And people were asking, are you sure? Some people came in over? thinking that she was came, came you know, And I like that she 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 maintains that culture. She yeah. didn't, I mean, of course, they delayed her a bit, definitely. Yes. But it was still not anything close to what we are used to here. What and I was to. so proud of that, yeah. you know. I mean, I'm happy. And hope, she should pay for damages. Yeah, I hope um, she pays. If she, if you do the crime, be ready to do the crime. Yeah, and I hope that we would implement <laughs> that in Nigeria too. Hopefully. And event organizers actually yeah. have a, a much more blame on this one because yes, they, do. they just... I don't know what their problem is, but they never get the things right. You see that the sound, and sometimes they've also blamed the event center. So mm. you have a show today, and there's also another one um, the mm. day before. Wow. So before they are able to clear and then fit in the sound that is for required this. for your mm. own type mm. of events, then that's another problem. So mm. they have their own issues, and I think they should come together, have a round table, and treat us right, because we pay money, really. <laughs> That's our wrap of this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching. And remember, you can watch this conversation all over again by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. You can also watch Tea Time on Auto TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you, as always, go to my co-anchors, Nimi Dekombi and Ife Oluwash, okay, and the entire production team. Thank you for watching. See you later. My name is Elsie Godwin. Oh, Lord.